Hi, I, I'm Michelle Greenwood. I'm part of the uh, Health Promotion Team in the Irish Skin Foundation and I'm delighted to be joined today by Karma Blake, Advanced Nurse Practitioner in Dermatology in Tallaght University Hospital, Dublin. Today we're going to talk about ammonium therapy, which is an important part of daily care in many skin conditions like eczema and psoriasis. So if it's okay with you, Karma, we'll start with some questions. So Karma, what is an ammonium? So ammoniums are products that soften and soothe the skin. Okay. And what are the different types of emollients? So as you can see here, Michelle, there's a huge range of emollients, but the three main groups of the emollients are the ointments, which are the very greasy products, the creams then that are less greasy, and then the lotions that are a lot thinner. There's more grease in these, and these are more effective but often people don't find them cosmetically acceptable. So they prefer to use these ones at night and they prefer to use the lighter ones during the day then where they can just apply them and get dressed relatively quickly after applying them. So why are emollients important and how do they work? So emollients repair and restore the skin barrier. They also help to prepare the skin for the treatments if they're applying an active treatment. They, you know, in scaly conditions like psoriasis, it helps to remove the scale. So then when they're applying their active treatment, that scale is removed. With so many different product types and different brands available, how do people choose the right one for themselves or their child? Yeah, it's very confusing, Michelle. You know, when people go into the pharmacy or the supermarkets, emollients are available in some of the supermarkets as well, is that, you know, you can see the range of product here. So what is the preference of the person? If you give somebody something very greasy, like a heavy ointment, if they don't like it, they won't use it. So it's also to take the lifestyle into consideration if you have a young child with bad hand eczema and you give them a most fine ointment, great moisturiser, but the pen will be slipping out of the hand, the believe in grease marks across the copy. So that's not an option during the day. It's, it's great in the evening time or at night time. So you have to look at something like a cream that's easily applied and absorbed very quickly. And then a lotion, if somebody's got a very hairy chest or hairy arms, a lotion is much better for those areas. Then you have to look at the budget. You know, silk up space and also my ointment are available on the medical card. So if people have a medical card, that's the cheapest option for them. Because they need to use a lot of emollient. So it is important that they can afford what they, they need to use. So Carmel, how much emollient should be applied to the skin? When the skin is very inflamed, an adult would use approximately 500 grams to 1,000 grams. So you can see this is 500 grams here, Michelle. This is 500 grams here. So it is a lot. In a week? In a week. In a week. In, with a child, they should use roughly 250 grams a week. Okay. So, as I said before, it is important that you work within your budget because it's very important that they do use enough emollient when, they, when their skin is inflamed. As the skin improves, they can decrease the amount of emollient applied. Initially, they may have to apply it three or four times a day, and that's why they would use so much emollient. Then they'd reduce it down to twice a day. So what is the best way to apply an emollient? So the emollient should be applied liberally and quickly, and applied in the downward direction of the hair, so that you don't trap the grease into the hair follicle, causing little salt bumps called folliculitis. So if you rub up and down and up and down, you're going to rub some of the cream back in under the hair and into the follicle and the little bumps can be 
quite sore. And when is the best time to apply a emollient? One of the best times to apply your emollient is straight after a bath or a shower. After a bath or a shower, just pat the skin dry, that the skin is slightly damp. And when you put your emollient on, then it will trap in some of that moisture. And ex sometimes experts refer to emollients as soap substitutes. What does this mean? With soap, it contains detergent, so we don't want patients using soap because the detergent strips the skin of the natural oils. So a soap substitute is an emollient that would clean the skin. So there's different types. You can use things like emulsifying ointment and silk hook space as a soap substitute that will moisturise and cleanse the skin. There are other emollients available then. There's washes available, and these don't contain detergent products. They will moisturise and cleanse the skin. Now, if you had an infection in your skin, there are other products then that might contain a little um, antibacterial uh, product in the, in the emollient. So it's important to talk to your pharmacist or your clinical nurse specialist or your doctor um, if you have an infection in your skin. And the Neurogen Foundation often get questions from people, um, should they use their emollient and their topical steroid, which is their active treatment, together? It's really important that people don't think that they can stop using their emollient because they're using steroid. Emollient is a really, really important part of the treatment regime. The emollients prepare the skin for the steroid. We call the steroid inactive or prescribed treatment. So when they apply their emollient, it does soften the skin. And we recommend that they leave the emollient to absorb in the skin for roughly 30 minutes before they apply the steroid cream then. Ultimately, if they use their emollients, they will end up using less steroid because if you apply steroids straight on to very dry, cracked skin, it's just absorbed very quickly. So if you prepare the skin with your emollient, the, the steroid you will end up using less. Great advice, Pam, thank you. Often parents will take care of their children's emollient regime, and as a child grows up, um, they will take over the management of their own skin condition. Any tips on how to teach children to look after their own emollient therapy? That's really important, Michelle. A lot of children that have eczema will carry on having eczema and having to manage it throughout their adult life. Some children will grow out of their eczema, but it is important that they learn a good skincare routine from a very early age. So it's finding products that they like and often, you know, if things are child friendly packaged, you know, with little colourful uh, yes. pictures on, it will sort yeah. of attract them to it. Plus, if it's a pump dispenser, it's easy for them to apply, you know, they can just pump it and rub it on. Try and make it fun if possible, you know, include the child, say I'll do your back, you do your arms, see who can finish first, you know, just try and make it a bit of fun for them. Also just be conscious to make sure that the room is warm when you're treating them so that it's not an unpleasant experience. If they're cold and shivering and then you put in a cold cream on then it won't be pleasant, so make sure it's a warm room, warm your hands and then just push the creams on and it should be done quickly. Great tips. Is there anything people should be cautious about when they're using emollients? Probably the biggest problem that I see is people sticking their fingers in tubs. When they stick fingers in tubs, they can contaminate the tubs. So they need to use something like a spatula, take out how much cream or ointment they're going to use and don't scrape the leftovers back into the tub because 
you will have undone your good work by using a stat spatula, you'd be putting contaminated cream back into the, the tub. So that's really important. Also, these products are greasy. So if you're using a soap substitute in the bath, you need to be using a bath mat. And in the shower as well, you also need to be to be aware that you can slip in the shower. Right. With some of the products as well, they contain paraffin and paraffin is flammable. So if the, if the clothes are soaked in the paraffin, you, you can't smoke when you've been applying the, the emollient. You could end up with a fire. Okay. Also, um, don't be putting creams on and all ointments and standing in front of the fire because if your clothes have uh, got the, the ointments soaked into your clothes, again, could start a fire. But it's okay to have the emollients <coughs> on your skin. It's, you know, it's safe to put emollients on your skin. It's just to be careful of the soakage into the clothing and bedding. Yeah, and you right. should have to change those regularly. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, great. And during, you know, we are in COVID-19, um, there's been increased hand washing and use of sanitizers, and people are finding their hands becoming dry and sore. Have you any hand washing or hand care tips during this time, Carmen? That has been a major problem, Michelle. In the healthcare setting, I've had numerous queries of staff just coming up to the department to see if we can give them advice about hand washing and hand sanitizers. And on the helpline, we've had a lot of queries as well about hand eczema. The thing about COVID-19 is that it has a lipid layer, and in order for us to destroy the, the COVID uh, virus, we have to break down that lipid layer. So the guidelines has, have been that a hand sanitizer should contain a minimum of 60% of alcohol in order to, to break down the COVID. So the hand sanitizer that I find very good for people is a 70% alcohol sanitizer and it also contains aloe vera so it does have a moisturising um, benefit. So staff and patients have loved that and initially people were using ordinary soap and if you're in somewhere where you have to use soap you can use this soap wash your hands do your proper hand wash technique and then rinse as much soap off as possible at the time and then do an extra little wash with your emollient to remove any detergent from the hands and then apply extra emollient as a barrier. But in the home care setting, you may like to use a hand wash that is gentle mm -hmm. and that will break down the COVID. So this hand wash is uh, very gentle and it has been uh, proven that it will break down the, the lipid in the uh, COVID. Another tip, if you're doing a lot of hand washing, is at the start of the day you may want to put a silicone barrier cream on your hands. For example, EpiShield is a very good barrier. It's effective for four hours after application. Even with hand washing, you don't need to reapply it. Uh, only every four hours. Okay. And um, have you any tips for parents of school-aged children who may be struggling with their hand dermatitis at the moment? Yeah, with um, with children, you want something that's easy to use and to prepare a little pack for them that they can use in school would be good. Okay. So forget about the soap and the emollient because they're not going to do it. They want something that's quick and easy. So a hand wash that is COVID destructive that they can use for a quick wash and a gentle hand sanitizer. That's a great size that yeah. can just be stuck into the school bag and they can use that. Ideally, a little emollient yeah. if they will use it. Okay. But you know, to put the, um, the gentle products in 
that wouldn't cause stripping of the skin mm. is important. Great advice, that's great. And before we finish up, would you have anything, any other tips you'd like to mention or share with us? Um, I frequently get tips from my patients okay. and probably one of the the best tips that I got from an elderly lady who was living alone and could, had no budget to do her back. She had psoriatic arthritis, so she was very stiff and couldn't reach her legs. So this is the emollient that she uses. She's not dependent on anybody to apply creams to her back. So she's able to reach every area herself and able to spray down the legs. So that was a great tip so a spray from, from a patient. So there are different sprays available. Again, depends on your budget. Okay. But one tip I'll give you is if you are using these soft sprays, they need to be using the towel on the ground. Just there are little particles of oil in the sprays and it can leave tiles slippery. Okay. So you just want to make sure that they're standing on the towel when they do this so that there's no spray of oil left on the, the tiles. Right. Also, it's great to go into your pharmacist and talk to your pharmacist. Tell them what your problem is because there's loads of active ingredients in different emollients. This is a mousse that is great for the scalp. It is an emollient mousse, so it's absorbed very quickly. It's not going to leave your hair all greasy, but it contains urea in it, which is a keratolytic agent. Uh, some of these emollients contain urea in them, and the keratolytic agent helps to descale okay. um, the skin. Okay. So particularly good if you've got a scaly scalp or if you've got scale on the soles of your feet, there's um, various creams with your earrings. So talk to your pharmacy. There's new things coming on market all the time. Sometimes if your skin is hot and, you know, feeling very uncomfortable because of the heat of the skin, menthol can be very cooling. So as you can see here, there's a range of products with menthol in, okay. and these are nice and cooling. So it's, it's good to go into the pharmacy, ask them for little samples because, you know, sometimes you might try something, you don't like mm -hmm. it, yeah. you've spent a fortune, and then it's just left sitting in the cupboard. Also, the samples are great for the handbag. One tip for emollient is have it everywhere. Have it in your handbag, school bag, the glove compartment of the car, the kitchen sink, the bathroom, beside the bed. You know, take every opportunity to apply your emollient. These little sizes are great to put in the, the handbag or the school bag. Because as I said earlier, it's about applying them liberally and frequently. Okay. Um, for emollients. And if, if people have sensitivities to certain ingredients or to certain products, any advice you'd give on that? You need to be aware of what is in the products, what your sensitivity is. Some patients will have been patch tested and they'll know which preservatives to avoid. So just read the labels. If you have a lot of sensitivities, the ointments are frequently the best emollients for you okay. for the simple reason that ointments contain less preservatives. Okay. Also just another tip is if you do have a skin infection, talk to your pharmacist, talk to your doctor. There are products available, as I said earlier, that contain an antimicrobial or an antibacterial they're not for long-term use. They're only for short-term use until the infection is healed, but it is a good part of the treatment if you do have an infection. So Carmel, where should people go for more information about emollient therapy? So for advice on emollient therapy, either ask if you're under the care of a dermatologist, talk to the dermatologist or the clinical nurse specialist. 
they would have samples that they're able to give you or else go to your local pharmacist. They can give great advice or talk to your GP. It is really important though that you work out a regime with your healthcare professional that you can stick to. Sometimes you have to compromise a little bit if your life is very busy. Use your ointment in the evening, use your cream during the day. You just have to work out a regime that's going to, to suit you, that the treatment that you pick is cosmetically acceptable, that it's within your budget and that you'll use. Thank you very much, Carmel, for joining us today and providing lots of really good information and healthy tips on ammonia and therapy. And for more information, log on to irishskin.ie.